No, please stop doing it. Okay, next. Sorry. What I don't want is to stop. Oh, God, it's so awkward. Stop. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stop. This is my favorite show we've ever done. Just this stop. is the greatest show. I love this show. I'm oh, seriously like. Oh, like a little puppy dog. Did you trim your beard here? <laughs> He's all, hang on a second. <laughs> we'll be right back. Morning. Welcome to Wake Up. <laughs> Where we wake, wake up. up. I'm Pastor Scott. I don't know. <laughs> That's something new every day. I'm Pastor Scott. And I'm Pastor Holly. And uh, Pastor Jason is in Africa with our son and his daughter, uh, daughter and a bunch of them doing a big crusade. But we're here. Yeah. We've got a scripture for your day. We want to pray over your day. And Friday is also Chuck Norris Friday. Chuck Norris Friday. You know what? Sometime, one time I asked what that is and someone said in the comments that I needed to keep up. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Did you know that uh, the boogeyman check under, checks under his bed to see if Chuck Norris is under it? You know I didn't the Superman know that, but I know now. wears Chuck Norris pajamas. That's hilarious. I don't think you thought it was as hilarious as it was. I do, I do because I am a Smallville fan. You are a Smallville fan. I'm a Superman fan. Yes, you are. And she lives with the this Superman. This is my Superman. Woo! All right, what's our scripture for the day? Luke 10 19. And don't forget to uh, uh, share, subscribe, and a thumbs bologna up. sandwich. Bologna sandwich. I have no idea what that means. But <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> You should know what it means. All right, what's our scripture? Luke ten nineteen. Okay. In Luke ten nineteen, it says, "I have given you authority to trample on serpents and snakes. I've given Ooh. you the authority, all authority, to overcome the power of the enemy. Nothing will do you harm by any means." Wow. And I think that's super powerful. We were talking about faithfulness. Right. And again, you know, I was sharing how. Um, Oftentimes we talk about the faithfulness of God, and I think that it's really awesome, and it's okay for us to have an expectation that God does all the heavy lifting in our lives. Right. But I do think that we it can't be at the sacrifice of knowing we have a role, because the Word right. also says faith without works is dead. So you and I have a role in this thing we're walking out called life, and that is to believe and trust Him. And so that scripture in Luke 10, 19, it stood out at me because I think sometimes we give the enemy more power than he really, really has. Right. That scripture tells me that in fact, and I shared this on Sunday, um, the enemy isn't powerful. He's actually just a lying punk. <laughs> you said that too. I said I'm gonna do a series I called Lying, because he is a lying punk. You yeah. think about it, if he had power, he would have grabbed Eve, put her in a headlock and shoved the, 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 the right. fruit down her throat. But all he really had was a lie. Well, and I love to use the word punk because have you ever met a punk? Have you ever like I interacted a with a punk? And how I do did. you treat a punk? Like, Danny, right? you remember that in sixth grade, punk. <laughs> I don't Danny. Even, I have no words right now. <laughs> I, I was really over here like all spiritual. <laughs> like you went to right like back. elementary I went right school. right back to sixth grade. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, now I'm like now I'm really thinking on the hilarity of what you said. It's gonna get me laughing. Anyway, where was I at? I don't know. Okay, I can't stop laughing. Um, I think when you get a picture of just how inconsequential the enemy is, when you realize what that scripture affords to you, okay. I think that um, it enables you to wake up a little bit more. Like, how do you you do that? Flex. Yeah, oh, yeah. there we go. Like that. Oh, yeah, like Daddy. you wake up like like this, yeah. and you're like, mm, uh -huh, kiss the guns, and yeah. you know, right? Woo. <laughs> but just got I, done doing 100 push-ups. And I love words. I, like I love... Sculpt the guns at the <laughs> office a little bit. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> do we have other people in the room today that you're We do, to but impress? here's the thing is I got... I, I don't know if you knew for Valentine's, I got you tickets to a gun show. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I cannot wait for February 14th. <laughs> I don't think that's accurate. Holding my breath. <laughs> I love you, though. <laughs> I know you do. So anyway. <laughs> okay, so, so what you I... you wake up a little bit more, boom. Flexing. Yeah. You know. I'm ready for my day. Yeah. Because I know that the enemy has no power. See, oftentimes we get into stress, worry, anxiety, because we believe the enemy's got more power than the enemy has. Right. In fact, that scripture shows you that you have the power that I think sometimes we, we defer to, to the enemy. And I love, in the word, I was getting to my words, I love words. 
And I love what they, um, the picture it creates in us. And that word trample, you know, we could read it and say, I give you all authority to step on snakes and scorpions. And that sounds super fun and fluffy, but it doesn't say that. It's kind of aggressive and it's a little bit violent. It says trample. trample. And I like that picture that it gives me when I am frustrated or when I am in a moment that needs to be completely obliterated in my life. When right. the enemy thinks he's got power, I need the imagery that says, no, you don't. As a matter of fact, I have all authority by God to trample on you in this situation right now. And what a picture that creates for me. I'm all of five foot. And so, you know, it gives me that I feel like a giant when I read the scripture that mm -hmm. says I have the authority to trample. And then it says, that we have been given the authority to overcome any power of the enemy. And I don't, I really, I think that that's the power we give him. We need to remind ourselves that he's only empowered, he's only got power when we empower his life, when we believe him. What a great picture it is, though, of the Israelites coming to the promised land. And the enemy had no power whatsoever. No. We saw the Red Sea parted. We see food yeah. coming by air. We see so many great miracles they've already seen. They got freed from one of the most powerful nations uh, at the time. Uh, at that time, and so we see God's amazing power. They had the, the plagues hit, all this stuff. Well, the water they, walls, the, right? And they I get mean, so they get to the Promised Land, and then the spies come back and say, "Oh, the enemy's too strong." The enemy's too big. There's no way we can take it. And so the enemy wasn't too strong because God was stronger. So all the enemy had to keep them out of the promised land was a lie that right, they bought into. That's right. Then Joshua and Caleb, who said, our God is stronger, are the two that ended up getting into the promised land later because they didn't believe the lie of Satan, but instead they believed the word of God. Which goes back to what we talked about yesterday. Choose as if you already are, who you want to be, what you are what the word says you are, and you'll become that. It's, quote, it's, that's a quote from somebody amazing. I forgot who did that yeah, one. The guy with the gun show. Boom! <laughs> See, you're not the only witty one. <laughs> I didn't know that. You're very witty. You make me laugh all the time. We laugh. <laughs> so. I'm a clown. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're pure comedy today. But the what did they put in your drink? <laughs> no, I told you I'm a word girl. So when you said I make you laugh all the time, I'm like, honk, honk. Like I have a big red nose on her <laughs> I don't think that's accurate. So as you go into, into your day, um, you begin to stop giving the devil power that the devil doesn't have. Right. Right? Oftentimes as Christians, we pray for more power. But Paul didn't say that. So Paul just said, I pray that you realize the power you already have. I've got the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead in me. Mm -hmm. So I don't need more power. I just need to realize the power that I have. And then I have to realize that the enemy is powerless. Now, he may have spies and people coming back and telling you how big the giants are and how bad the economy is and how right now doing this or that isn't going to work. And he just throws all these lies all around us. But right in here is the only truth that I need, the truth that says that I can do all things through Christ Jesus, that if God's for me, it doesn't matter who's against me, that I can go forth boldly, that I am blessed when I go in and I'm blessed when I go out. Even in the times of famine, it says I can be blessed and wells will spring up for me. Well, when you talk about how it's not that you need more power, it, it made me think of the word also talks about all it takes is mustard seed faith. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. we think we need to get faith in our faith or sometimes we try to go and, and grow more faith in our ability to have right. faith. And really the Bible talks specifically to that. It, it directly talks to that. It says all you need is mustard seed faith. You just need a little tiny bit of faith. But watch what happens when that farmer, right, sows a tiny seed, it turns in to a massive harvest. It turns into something really, really big. And I think that that's, again, the imagery and a picture in the word of us sowing just the little that we need. And watch and see the harvest, the huge harvest that it's going to produce in your life. I, I, I got to think about that this morning. That's really good because when I plant a little mustard seed, it grows into a tree Something that has bigger. thousands of mustard seeds on it. Yeah. So I wonder if you step out in faith and you begin to just plant that little mustard seed faith, if all of a sudden your faith gets bigger and bigger and some of the so, some bigger things, mm -hmm. you still you walk through some bigger stuff with some bigger faith. Your faith grows in that. We got you want to pray over their day. I do. Father God, I thank you and I praise you for this amazing day that you created. I thank you right now and um, I just come into agreement with everybody listening and everybody watching that this is the day that the Lord has made and we are going to go forth in it and rejoice in it and praise you for it. And I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Watch this clip. Social media 
is right now they believe is the, the number one cause of depression in our teenagers. And it's the number one cause, they believe, for suicide among teenagers. And I think that we don't even know what it does even for adults. And I, I said last week to do the fruit test. When you get done with the news, do you feel ucky and annoyed and mad at everything? Well, then don't do it. Get a, do things that make you feel good. Jesus said, do things that make you feel good. If you get done with social media, and when you get done, you're so angry and frustrated, right? Because, oh my gosh, she's got the perfect thing, everything. She's got a little pic of her, and they had a picnic, and my lover carried me up to the top of the mountain, and he had candles up there. You're like, well, my lover doesn't do anything for me. And even her lover's like, Man, honey, we, we just went to the Denny's. I don't know, where, where'd you get that pick from, right? And you're comparing your imperfection to their perfection, and they got the perfect picture of your other children and everything. You're like, I can't even get my kids to smile. And you get done looking at all the, the perfections of everybody around you, and you're so frustrated about the comparisons that are going on. And oh my God, I lost 382 pounds by just eating apples and grapes. You're like, oh my gosh, I haven't eaten in seven days. I lost no weight. Right? right, And you're looking at the pictures, you're like, oh my God, she's dying. he's doctoring, they're dying, and, every, and everything's frustrating you when you get done with it, and you're so anxious and annoyed. Get off of it. Well, you don't need that junk in your life, and you poured your heart out, and you put on something in, the, everything all right? I heard something fall. You poured your heart out in, in the Facebook, and it was something so important to you, right? And you look, after all day, you keep checking, and you got two likes. Right? Somebody puts a picture of a dumb cat and they get 183 likes, and my heart is on there for two? You're so mad. And my point is to this. Social media, you can enjoy it, as long as you can enjoy it. But if you're getting off of it, and it's frustrating, and it's taking up your day, and it's causing the wrong thing, and it's making you stressed and anxious and comparison, and you're not able to love who you are, because exactly the way you are is the way God loves you. He don't want you to change anything. Come on, somebody out there. He loves you. You're, you're priceless. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget about the, this weekend, be yeah. in church, and if you're in our area and you're coming to our church, uh, we got kind of a Super Bowl Sunday going yeah, on, I got a new series, uh, Mr. Scotty's Neighborhood's going on, it's going to wow. be an incredible series, and uh, come hang out with us, but wear your jersey, yes. wear your Kansas City Chiefs jerseys, which you wear. Right. We'll see you this weekend.